when an electronic transition occurs, a photon is either absorbed or emitted. So if a photon is absorbed, an electron goes from a low energy state to a high energy state. When a photon is emitted, that's an electron in an excited state dropping down to a lower energy state. When we observe those things, we say, oh, there's blue light, or there's an ultraviolet photon being absorbed or emitted. We can infer something about the electronic structure of that atom. That process is called spectroscopy, looking at the absorption and emission spectra of atoms, molecules, and all kinds of species, and determining by inference what's happening in the system. So let's look at that. In the hydrogen atom, you have various energy levels that we're now familiar with. And if you have transitions that end or start in principal quantum level 1, those transitions will all be in the ultraviolet. Our eyes won't be sensitive to them. You can design a detector that detects ultraviolet, but our eyes don't work to detect these. They're too high energy of photons. If transitions start or end, that is, they'd end in 2 if it was an emission. They would start in 2 if there was an absorption of a photon. We can have the first, which is the 3 to 2 transition, actually is in a visible region. So it's at about 657 nanometers. That's a red photon. And we could detect that with our eyes. The 4 to 2 is in the green about 487 nanometers, and the 5 to 2 is in the blue around 435 nanometers. These various bands of emission have been given names over the past. The ultraviolet Lyman series of lines or the Balmer series of lines, those ending or starting in n equal 2. Now, since there's these visible emission lines, we can detect those. If we excite hydrogen or any number of gases, there'll be emissions that are in the visible spectrum, and we can see them. And if you do ex excitation in particular, if you excite gases and let the photons be emitted, you can actually see them. And that's how neon signs work. They excite gases, and then those gases emit photons, and those photons are visible to us. So we can do that. We have a, a mini neon tube, and it's called neon generically. Of course, in our tubes, there's several different gases. We have, in fact, all the gases of the atmosphere. We have nitrogen, oxygen, neon, helium, hydrogen, all the gases that are uh, found to a certain extent in the atmosphere. When I excite them with an electric charge, the electrons will be promoted, and they will emit specific energies. They'll emit them all at once, so the colors will be a, a mixture of these. They'll also be emitting that ultraviolet radiation. We won't be able to see that, but it's, it's emitted at the same time. So let's look at the emission spectrum of atoms and molecules. And now we understand in these gaseous atoms that the transitions are occurring. That light is being emitted because there's an electron in a high principal quantum level falling down to a lower principal quantum level and emitting a discrete photon of energy. Let's look at that. So there's the emission of light by those gases when they're excited by an electric charge. You can see the various colors, a lot of them bluish, where there's high energy photons. And there's even photons, as we said, in the ultraviolet being emitted. So we're doing kind of a spectroscopy experiment here. If we were doing a formal ex spectroscopy experiment, would we, we would resolve, using a grating, the light that's coming from these various gases into its component form. So we could find exactly which wavelengths were being emitted. If we know exactly the wavelength, we can c calculate exactly the energy difference of the atomic orbitals in these atoms. So you can see how powerful spectroscopy is to understand the properties and the structure of atoms.